This tutorial will show you an easy method to create a procedurally generated nebular texture and a simple way to animate it using Blender's shader nodes. So let's fire up Blender. As you can see, we're starting off with a camera pointing at a simple plane. Let's also point out that we're using the EV render engine with a sample set to 1, meaning that the result will be extremely render friendly. Now, let's head over to the shading viewport. By default, when we create a new material, Blender gives us the principled BSDF shader. Here, we're only interested in the emission color, emission strength, and alpha channel of this shader. To start, let's create the main branch of our shader. So, let's use the Add menu and search for a Texture Coordinate node. Followed by a Mapping node, a Noise Texture node, and a Color Ramp node. Here, we'll be using the Object Output of the Texture Coordinate node. Also, make sure to set the Noise Texture to 4D. The Color Ramp node will determine the density of the nebula using the alpha channel of Blender's principal shader. However, to get the alpha channel to work properly, we need to go to the material properties and set the blend mode to alpha blend. Now, to add some detail to the texture, go ahead and add another noise texture node along with a Mix RGB node. The combination of these two nodes will enable us to add some noise to the output coordinates. As you can see, we can adjust the intensity of the added noise using the Mix RGB factor. For now, I'm going to set this factor to 0 0.8. Next, to add some color and lighting to the nebula texture, let's add another color ramp node and a math node. Both of these nodes will take their input from the preceding color ramp node. Attach a new color ramp node to the emission color of the principal shader. Now, to animate the texture, we're going to use a simple Blender driver. So, let's add a value node, along with a vector math node, and a simple math node. To set the driver, select the value node, enter a pound sign, and type in frame. During animations, this value will give us the current frame number, which we can then use to drive other parameters. So, connect this driver value to the vector math node. Set the vector math node to divide the input values to offset the x value of the texture coordinates. Then, again, use the driver value, this time by attaching it to the math node. Again, make sure to set the math node to divide the input values. This will make the noise texture change over time. Now let's play the animation by hitting spacebar on our keyboard. If the texture is moving too fast or too slow, you can use the parameters of the math nodes to adjust the speed of the animation. If you like this tutorial, be sure to check out these other videos. As for this one, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.